Hey, thank you for coming out on this very cool June day. I think it must have been an answer to uh, a lot of prayers. Uh, this cool weather and the, and, the, and the storm to help help with some of those fires in the valley. So uh, welcome, though. Thank you for taking time out of your day to come and join with us. My name is Dale Robinson. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director for Spanish Fork City. And uh, we have several staff here that I'll introduce, uh, as well as uh, our city council members, Mike Mendenhall and Brandon Gordon. You guys could do your parade wave or something, practice, and Chad and Kier. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here and thanks for your support of, of another one of our awesome recreational facilities uh, here in Spanish Fork City. Uh, we need to excuse the mayor today. Um, his, uh, his mother passed away just recently and, and so he's not able to be with us this morning. But we also uh, wanna, certainly wanna recognize our trails crew, uh, Joel Harris, who's the contractor, Joel. There you go, not like this. There you go, Joel Harris. I don't, is Dustin here? Okay, Dustin's not here yet, but he's also uh, one of our trail builders and, and uh, some of the brain, brain child behind all this stuff. So uh, we appreciate the work that they've done on this project. Uh, as well as our projects crew, we wanna recognize our projects crew, Rob and Keola. Who else is here? Brent, where are you? There he is, Brent Frost. Uh, who else do we have on your crew? DJ is DJ Swalberg and Jackson Hanks. So thanks to those guys who did a lot of work on this project as well. We do have some uh, very appropriate uh, snacks for you today. We, did, we weren't planning on hot chocolate in the end of June, but so we don't have that, but we do have some trail mix. Uh, we've also got some Mountain Dew and I also got some Dr. Pepper, just in case Mike didn't land the backflip. So you're welcome to, to enjoy some of those as well. We also have little first aid kits, okay? That's appropriate. We've had a, we've had a few wrecks already up here, as you can imagine, but, uh, uh, and thank Emily and Karen and those guys who helped as well. I thought I saw our city manager come in. Is he here? Seth Perrins, recognize Seth. Uh, who got here who's with us today as well. Six or seven years ago, we built the first little mountain bike trail up across the ridge here. And uh, we've now added a little more high adventure for some, uh, some mountain bikers, which has become very popular. Uh, we, have, um, we have several uh, mountain bike clubs in the high schools now who are, who are driving this as well and, uh, and wanted to have some additional facilities that they could uh, they could practice on. Uh, so we're excited about this. Uh, we, were, uh, we were anxious to have uh, Mike Mendenhall has been practicing all week his backflip on his bike. And I, I called him this morning. He was very disappointed that I told him we'd, we wouldn't be able to do that today because it was going to be too muddy. Uh, but, uh, and Brandon, I know, had some tricks up his sleeve for us. But we're not going to be able to ride the trail. But... We've got some cool vi video footage we want you to look at. Um, uh, one of these is a YouTube video. Uh, Daniel Stallworthy provided that for us and also drone footage by Dallin Baker uh, with Thacker Wings. Checking in at Red Knoll Run in Spanish Oaks. Uh, this trail is brand new. Just got built a couple months ago. It's a fun downhill float trail. Here with James. Smiles for miles, what? Miles from miles. All right. We're getting in some good film session. Um, hopefully we'll be able to show you the ins and outs of this trail today. I'm going to record this up trail and I'll be I'll do like I did on Hidden Oaks. <laughs> I'll just speed it up. I 
made it to the top. Red Knoll Run DH. It says it's an advanced flow trail. That was so good. I, I burnt my tire so bad. I keep... That was so good. So let me turn the time over to Mike to say a few things and then to Joel. Well, thank you, Dale. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, yeah, that backflip was going to be epic. Uh, I think I've done one on accident before. Didn't make it completely. But, uh, but I've been over the front of a mountain bike and off the back of a mountain bike before. And, and that's probably going to happen in the future here. Um, what a beautiful place to be. Uh, again, uh, excusing the mayor and, and, uh, and, and mayor, or excuse me, Mayor Lafeson and, and Council Member Beck, um, but uh, sure appreciate my colleagues, uh, Councilman Argyle and, and Gordon and, and Scobes, and uh, the city staff uh, for, uh, for uh, keeping this vision going, uh, supporting the Parks and Rec Department, Dale's uh, department uh, and, and BART and, uh, and everyone that's involved in this project to, from the beginning to the end of, uh, of a few people saying, hey, this is a great idea and a great place for this to be, and now expanding this system uh, all the way up uh, our beautiful canyon that, that looks over uh, our beautiful valley. Uh, I started to think a little bit about, you know, when you're on a trail, whether it's a mountain bike trail or a walking trail, uh, and, and I think this is pertinent to, to our time too, is it doesn't matter who you see, whether you're passing them with a mountain bike or, you, or you're passing them walking on a trail, you, you nod your head at somebody or, or you give them a little wave and, and you just say hi. And it's because there's some sense of commonality there, right? There's some sense of, of humanity. You're both on a little bit of a journey. Uh, you hear stories all the time of people want, running out of you know, water or food on a hike and, and somebody helping them. And, uh, and for me, that's what stuck out as I started to think about coming up here today was a trail like this and how many times people from our community, people from 
literally all over the state. If you were talking about a weekend like we just got through with the, with the gun club, people from all over the country, right, um, would be walking on this trail, would be riding on this trail, and they don't know each other's background. They don't know each other's history. They certainly don't care about each other's political uh, leanings or their, their, you know, their religious affiliation or anything like that. But there's a sense of humanity and commonality that when you're outside in nature and you're on a trail, you nod your head at each other and you say, you say hi and you wave. And, uh, and, and there's instantly a connection that you're, you're kind of on a journey together. And so just another, another asset, another resource for us uh, to, uh, to have that in Spanish Fork is such a huge blessing. To connect it to miles and miles of, uh, of trail that, that gets us from one end of our community to the other is, uh, is something special as well. Joel was telling me before this how, how awesome it is of kids from all over the place that ride their bike to here and can get can get here pretty safely uh, on their bikes and then ride the trail and ride their bikes home. Um, again, what a great asset, a great resource to keep our kids active, to keep them healthy, and, uh, and to connect them not only with nature but with other people uh, doing similar things. This place has a, a, a special place in my heart. I'm looking behind all of you at the, the place that, uh, that I, 17 years ago, nearly to the day, asked my wife to marry me. And, uh, and looked over this valley, thankfully she said yes, uh, and, uh, and grew up just down the, the road here. So, so these, uh, these places and these trees and, and this dirt have a special place in the, in the heart of me and my family uh, because we've been up here, I grew up here. Uh, but, but now to see uh, the city take an active role to bring so many more people up to this, uh, this great place and this beautiful area is, uh, is, is really something to behold. Uh, the mayor always says it really well, and he talks about our logo in Spanish Fork of pride and progress. Proud of where you've been, but certainly not uh, fearful of, of progress ahead. I think this trail and its completion certainly does speak to that, is the progress of Spanish Fork, opening so many more opportunities for people to come and enjoy recreation in all different forms. Huge asset for, I know, the high school kids that are now into to mountain biking, and it's an official you know, sport, not just an activity. But what a great resource to, to, to give to them as, as well. Um, again, you'll see it if somebody happens to have to, to leave Spanish Fork and put their property up for sale because they got to go somewhere else for work or whatever. Here's another addition that I think you see on a listing for sure is how many minutes are you away from great mountain bike trails, uh, great walking trails uh, and, uh, and, and this awesome area. So thanks again for coming uh, and, uh, and thank you, Dale, for your department and all you've done to, to make this dream a reality. And, uh, and uh, again, we're so proud that, uh, that this has come to completion and, and excited for the progress that it brings to our city. So thanks again. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, a fantastic leadership group here at Spanish Fork City, starting with the mayor and the city council, and then all of the departments. I was talking to Chris Thompson the other day about uh, how impressed I am that in this city, there's so much overlap between departments. Uh, each department's not, not afraid to share their resources with another in order to accomplish great things, and it's, it seems like it's always been that way, and, and so hats off to Spanish Fork City for, uh, for that collaborative effort. And, and and really, not something like this, as cool as this, this whole facility is up here with the gun club and the reservoir and the, and the bike trails and, and walking trails, it couldn't happen without a, a, collaborative, a collaborative effort between so many different parties and individuals. So the way that this happened is uh, I got a phone call from, from Bart a while ago who said that uh, they, they, the city had some interest in making a some bike, mountain biking trails, some downhill float trails and jump lines, and, and wondered if we could, could help him out with that, if there was a way that we could do it within a, within a pretty narrow budget. It, it wasn't a huge budget, considering what we were, we've been able to accomplish here. And so we came up with Rob and with some of the other guys from the Parks and Rec Department, and we, and we walked the trails. 
And we walked, uh, you know, up through the hollow and up onto Red Knoll, and, and it was really fun to, to walk alongside my partner, Dustin Malley, who, who hopefully will be here in just a minute, but to, with, with the four or five of us walking up these, these trails, to really try to paint a picture of what it could be like. And on all the while, I'm thinking, trying to think from a, a city perspective, a liability perspective, because my partner wants to go big or go home, and, and I'm trying to build a trail that, that everyone can use, that, that functions for the majority of people. Anyone that can jump on a mountain bike, I wanted them to be able to roll over the jumps, or if you're proficient and you're an expert like Mike, then you're, you, can throw, you can go as big as you'd like. And so, so there's a real... Uh, uh, talent in being able to design a trail. And that, that is not me, that is Dustin, my partner, who is able to put together a trail that, that so many people are able to use and, and, and could serve the needs of so many people in the, in the city. And so uh, the city was awesome to work with. In fact, they were even able to bring up their own equipment with Killa and, and Frosty. They were, they were running, we put them over above the gun club where, the, where it got really steep the dangerous area, but, it, but they did a fantastic job cutting in the trails uh, based on Dustin's direction. And, and so the, the collaboration between, uh, between our, our team and the city team was, was fantastic. And, and you know, it's always been that way in Spanish Fork City from the volunteer fields and, and every, everywhere else. It seems like uh, even with the new All Abilities Park that's going on, uh, there's real vision behind what occurs here in Spanish Fork City. That's the draw for me to Spanish Fork City is that, is that there's vision. And you know, there, it was a long time ago when my father-in-law, Dave Wheeler, uh, used to sit up on that knoll. I think he always wanted to build a cabin up there. It was kind of a reverent place for him where he'd get up there and he'd look over this uh, undeveloped, underdeveloped city. And he'd, you know, this was 30 years ago and he'd look over at the city and, and think, well, what could, it, what could it become? And he had this vision of, of what it could become. And, and so uh, from that perch, uh, many th great things came to pass with SFCN and, and fiber optics and, and innovation that has occurred with the reservoir and beaches and, and, uh, and, uh, and the trail system that just that goes throughout the entire city and, and, con and the connectivity between all of the, the subdivisions. And, and so that kind of vision is, is what makes Spanish Fork great. Uh, it, it what makes... Uh, me want to stay here and raise my kids here. And so what I would like to do is put the city on the spot. I'm glad we've got a city manager. He can figure this out. But uh, we've, we quickly depleted all of our funds here <laughs> building these trails. But I'd like to propose that we, we raise another uh, small amount to be able to put a, a pavilion, not maybe as substantial as this one here, but, but a nice pavilion where we can put picnic tables and everything up on the top and where you can walk on the trail or ride your bike to the very top and sit down on a picnic table and look out over this beautiful valley in, in Spanish Fork City. And I believe it should be appropriately entitled Oilers Outpost. And if the city's willing to come up with 50%, let's say it's a $30,000 number to build this pavilion with some effort from the, from the city and with, with a, a lot of our friends here, uh, then we'll raise the other $15,000. We'll come up with 50% of of whatever the, that costs if the city's willing to participate. And it looks like, where'd Seth go? He's nodding, he says, uh, thumbs up, we can get that done. So we'll put Euler's Outpost up on the top, another great uh, facility that, that everyone can enjoy, uh, especially as you ride your bike on a hot day to the very top and, and you're tired and you wanna sit down and rest and drink your Gatorade. So thank you for that uh, participation. Uh, what's really cool about this trail is that I'll be walking through the subdivision in town just to, or riding my bike through town and kids will come running out of their garage and say, hey, are you the guy that built the trail up at the gun club? And they get so excited and they tell me about how they ride their bikes from their house down in town on the trails, like Mike said, and, and end up riding their bikes here uh, on these mountain biking trails. And, and, and the excitement that comes, and what's cool about that is these kids, they may not be in, engaged in some of the other sports that are available throughout the town, but they absolutely love my mountain biking. And it's provided this really cool identity for these kids. They have self-worth and value, and, and they're somebody special because they can come up here and ride these trails, and, and, they, and they bring their friends along, and they talk about it, and they post videos to YouTube, and it's something really cool that they can do. And I love the Spanish Fork City, where, whether it's golf 
or it's baseball, or it's pickleball, whatever it is, these kids uh, in our neighborhoods and in our city uh, have an identity. They're, they're, they're worth something to themselves and to others because of, of, of uh, something that they can become proficient in. And so that's, uh, that's what I would like to encourage uh, this city, continue with great vision, with great innovation and solutions and collaboration so that uh, our kids know that they mean something to us. I appreciate it, uh, Dale and, and the city. Thank you for all you've done. My name is Dustin Malley. Uh, started riding mountain bikes when I moved to Utah back in 02. Uh, grew up riding moto and BMX and uh, mountain bikes seemed to fill that void. <laughs> um, it's been an awesome thing living in Utah. It definitely kept me here was the mountain biking. Uh, these trails I like to build uh, mostly to keep the fun factor in mind. Um, nice good flow. Just as long as it puts a smile on people's faces on the way down, it's always a good thing my main goal. Uh, there's always erosion and drainage and everything else you got to keep in consideration. Um, but yeah, it's uh, pr I'm glad to be doing what I'm doing. Yeah, so if you haven't been here before, we got some really fun trails. The, the Hidden Oaks DH over in the trees is a good starter. Um, when you come over to Red Knoll, it gets a little more faster, steeper corners, bigger jumps. There's a few uh, jumps that you could pretty much go almost as far as you'd like to go. <laughs> so mountain biking is really great for everybody. Um, if you're just starting to get into it, uh, the progression rate, you know, start off slow, get comfortable with what you're doing, um, slowly progress from there and go bigger. Um, learning to jump can be tricky, um, but the kind of the same thing, if you just kind of take it easy and get real comfortable with what you're doing, uh, you'll find yourself progressing pretty quick and slowly step it up.